Fearful that his home was bugged by the KGB, Oleg Gordievsky entered his room, switched off his lights, and lit up a candlelight to read the escape plan given to him by MI6. Appear on a specified street corner on any Tuesday at 7 p.m. carrying a Safeway plastic bag. Wait long enough to be noticed. Make eye contact with a man carrying a Harrods bag who'll be munching food. This will activate the escape plan. This is the story of the KGB Colonel Oleg Gordievsky and his unbelievably daring escape story. Oleg Gordievsky was born in Moscow on October 10, 1938, into a family deeply connected to the Soviet security apparatus. His father Anton Gordievsky and elder brother Vasily Gordievsky were officials in the NKVD, the predecessor of the KGB. Growing up in an environment like that, Oleg was exposed to the principles and operations of the Soviet security services from a young age. Gordievsky's older brother Vasily, who was undergoing training to become a spy, mentioned Oleg's potential interest in joining the service to KGB officials. The fact that he spoke German also helped him get recruited. In August 1961, he was posted to Berlin as a German translator in the Russian embassy, marking the beginning of his espionage career with the KGB. Gordievsky's espionage career progressed steadily within the KGB from this point on, even though he didn't start out as a spy on the ground. He was initially tasked with producing forged documents for fellow spies to conceal their identities. It wasn't until January 1966 that he received his first mission as a handler for operatives and was posted to the Soviet Embassy in Copenhagen, Denmark. When he first joined the service, he was a dedicated officer. However, that quickly changed. Gordievsky's discontent with the Soviet system began to take root during his youth and was further fueled by significant events in Soviet history. One of the main events that pushed him was the Soviet invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968, which Gordievsky witnessed while working as a KGB operative. The invasion, aimed at suppressing the Prague Spring reforms, led to widespread international condemnation and opposition from within the Soviet Union. Throughout his early missions, Gordievsky's hatred for the Soviet system continued to grow, eventually leading him to initiate contact with Western intelligence services to become a double agent. Codenamed Sunbeam, Gordievsky operated under strict conditions while he was posted as the KGB station chief in London. Gordievsky made use of an MI6 safe house to deliver top secret Soviet documents to his handlers. But Gordievsky's identity as a double agent was compromised because of a CIA officer, Aldrich Ames, who betrayed Gordievsky to the KGB. Completely unaware, Gordievsky was called back to Moscow. And even though MI6 told him that he could defect to the UK by simply choosing to stay in London, Oleg refused, saying that he could be of more help from Moscow and that he was going to be safe. But as soon as he landed back in Russia, it was clear that wasn't the case. He was flagged at the airport and knew something was off, and so it was. Gordievsky was picked up by two KGB agents and taken to a remote location. There they gave him a few drinks with dinner, drinks that were clearly spiked because he began losing control over himself, ultimately losing consciousness. When he woke up, he was in his apartment, and he vaguely remembered being interrogated. Throughout the interrogation, the agents kept asking him to confess, which meant that even if they were suspecting Gordievsky of being a double agent, they actually didn't have proof. Sensing the imminent danger, Gordievsky activated Operation Pimlico, the plan that the MI6 devised for his extraction from Moscow back when he was initially called. The plan had been printed on a cellophane sheet and concealed within an edition of Shakespeare's sonnets. He had to dissolve the pages in water to uncover the plan. After that, he memorized it before heading out. Gordievsky and MI6 had prearranged a specific signal to indicate the activation of Operation Pimlico. This signal involved Gordievsky waiting on a particular street corner in Moscow at a specific time and carrying a Safeway bag. He had to be wearing a gray hat and gray trousers, so he did just that. An MI6 agent was going to be at the location every Tuesday, 
just in case Gordievsky ever needed help. Aware of the pre-ranged signal, he walked past Gordievsky, carrying a Harrods bag and eating a Mars bar. This agent intentionally made eye contact with Gordievsky, signaling mutual recognition and indicating that the escape plan was to be activated immediately. On July 19, 1985, Gordievsky executed the next phase of his escape plan. Oleg used to go for a jog every day, and it looked like he was doing the same thing, but instead of following his routine, he knew that this was the time to get to dry cleaning. This is the code for shaking off surveillance teams, and he actually managed to do it. Right afterwards, he boarded an overnight train to Leningrad. He took a sedative and got some rest because he knew the worst was about to come. His finish line was the Finnish border, which was still a long way from where he was. What's even worse is that he couldn't be sure that he'd shaken off all of the people following his tail. But even at this point, he had no other choice. He needed to get to the border fast. From Leningrad, Gordievsky continued his journey, traveling to a rendezvous point south of Vyborg near the Finnish border. The location was deep within the forest, with nothing around him. He had to stay in this location for seven hours, all alone, watching over his shoulder the entire time. If he was being tailed, this would give the KGB enough time to catch up to him and eliminate him. The forest was full of mosquitoes, and being the only one in the area, he became their prime target. But he had to wait. Everything had to be like this. This location was strategically chosen to facilitate his crossing into Finland, where he would be safe. At the rendezvous point, Gordievsky was met by British embassy cars that had managed to lose the three KGB surveillance cars that were following them. Both of the cars had MI6 agents in them, along with their wives, so the process would be as under the radar as it possibly could be. Even at that point, Gordievsky couldn't say a word to the agents because these were embassy cars. And while that made it easier for them to get through check posts, it also meant that it was possible these cars were bugged. So, as soon as the agent opened the boot, which was the signal, he got out of the woods and laid down in the boot of the car. He was given a heat-proof blanket, so if they passed by a checkpoint that was using heat radars, there would be no reading suggesting that there was anyone else in the car. With all of that preparation in place, the cars were still stopped at the Finnish border. And sniffer dogs went around the car, and they would have gotten a wind of Gordievsky, but the wife of the agent strategically dropped one of her son's soiled diapers right next to the boot, so the dogs got distracted and had to be taken away, giving them a clear way to get across the border. After what felt like an eternity for Gordievsky, he heard the car radio switch from loud pop music to Sibelius's Finlandia, which was a clear signal that he'd made it to Finland. A while later, the boot opened, and he saw the open sky and smelled the pine trees. Gordievsky then made his way to Norway, from where he was flown to the UK. Gordievsky was given a brand new identity and placed under strict security measures to protect him from potential retaliation by the KGB. To this day, Gordievsky lives in an undisclosed location, surrounded by security personnel and surveillance to safeguard him. Following Oleg Gordievsky's defection and escape to the UK, Soviet authorities sentenced him to death in absentia for treason. Despite the collapse of the Soviet Union and the transition to post-Soviet Russia, this sentence has never been rescinded by Russian authorities. But the sentence remains in place as a symbolic condemnation of Gordievsky's actions, while he's still under the protection of MI6 at 85 years old and will be until the end of his days.